This lecture is about the similarity based approaches to text clustering. In this lecture, we're going to continue the discussion of how to do text clustering. In particular, we're going to cover a different kind of approaches uh, than generative models, and that is similarity based approaches. So the general idea of uh, similarity based clustering is to explicitly specify a similarity function to measure the similarity between two text objects. Now, this is in contrast uh, with a generative model where we implicitly define the clustering bias uh, by using a particular objective function like a likelihood function. The whole process is driven by optimizing the likelihood. But here, we explicitly provide a view of what we think are similar. And this is often very useful because then it allows us to inject uh, uh, any particular view of similarity into the clustering program. So once we have a similarity function, we can then aim at optimally partitioning to partitioning the data into clusters or into different groups and try to maximize the intergroup similarity and minimize the intergroup similarity. That is to ensure the objects that are put into the same group to be similar, but the objects that are put into different groups to be not similar. And these are the general goals of clustering. And there's often a trade-off between uh, achieving both goals. Now, there are many different methods for doing similarity-based clustering. In general, I think uh, we can distinguish two strategies at high level. Uh, one is to progressively construct a hierarchy of clusters and so this often leads to hierarchical clustering. And we can further distinguish two ways to construct the hierarchy, depending on whether we start with the collection to divide the, uh, the collection or start with individual objects and gradually group them together. So one is bottom-up, that can be called agglomerative, where we gradually group similar objects into larger and larger clusters until we group everything together. The other is top-down or divisive. Uh, in this case, we gradually partition the whole data set into smaller and smaller clusters. The other general strategy is uh, to start with the initial tentative clustering and then iteratively improve it. And this often leads to a flat clustering. One example is uh, k-means. So as I just said, there are many different clustering methods available and uh, a full coverage of all these clustering methods would be um, beyond the scope of this course. Uh, but here we're going to talk about the two representative methods uh, in some detail. Uh, one is hierarchical agglomerative clustering, or HAC. Uh, the other is k-means. So first, let's look at the agglomerative hierarchical clustering. Uh, in this case, uh, we're given a similarity function cause to measure similarity between two objects. And then we can gradually group similar objects together in a bottom-up fashion to form larger and larger groups. And they also form a hierarchy. And then we can stop when some stopping criterion is met. It could be either some number of clusters has been achieved or the threshold for similarity has been reached. Uh, there are different uh, variations here, and they mainly differ in the ways to compute a group similarity based on the individual object similarity. So let's illustrate uh, how we can induce a structure based on uh, just similarity. So start with all the text objects, and we can then measure the uh, similarity between them, of course, based on the provided similarity function. And then we can see which pair has the highest similarity, and then just group them together. And then we're going to see uh, which pair is uh, the next one to group. Maybe these two now have the highest similarity. And then we can gradually group them together. In, and then every time we're going to pick the highest similar, similarity pairs to group. Right? This will give us a binary tree eventually to group everything together. Now. Depending on our applications, we can use the whole hierarchy as a structure for browsing, for example. Or we can choose a cutoff, let's say cut here, to get four clusters. Or we can use a threshold uh, to cut. Or we can 
uh, cut at this high level to get just the uh, two clusters. So this is the general idea. Now, if you think about how to implement this algorithm, you will realize that uh, we have everything specified except for uh, how to compute the group similarity. We are only given the similarity function of two objects, but as we group groups together, we also need to assess the similarity between two groups. And there are also different ways to do that. And there are the three popular methods are a single link, complete link, and average link. So given two groups and the single link algorithm is going to define the group similarity as the similarity of the closest pair of the two groups. Complete link defines the similarity of two groups as the similarity of the farthest pair. Average link defines the similarity as the average of the similarity of uh, all the pairs of the two groups. So it's much easier to understand these uh, methods by illustrating them. So here are two groups, G1 and G2, with some objects in each group. And we know how to compute the similarity between uh, two objects. But the question now is, how can we compute the similarity between the two groups? Right? And then we can, in general, base this on the similarities of the objects in the two groups. So in terms of single link, and we're just looking at the closest pair. So in this case, these two pair, uh, objects would define the similarity of the two groups. As long as they are very close, we're going to say the two groups are very um, close. So it's an uh, optimistic uh, view of similarity. The complete link, on the other hand, will in, be in some sense pessimistic. And by uh, taking the similarity of the two farthest pair as the similarity for the two groups. Um, so we are going to make sure that if the two groups are um, having a high similarity, then every pair uh, of the two group, uh, the objects in the two groups will have uh, will be ensured to have high similarity. Now average link is in between, so it takes the average of all these um, pairs. Now these different ways of computing group similarities will lead to different clustering algorithms and they will in general give different results. Now, so it's useful to take a look at the, uh, their differences and to make a comparison. Now first, um, single link uh, can be expected to generate the loose clusters. The reason is because as long as two objects are very similar, in the two groups, it will bring the two groups together. If you um, think about the, this is similar to um, having parties with people, then it just means uh, two group of two groups of people would be uh, partying together. As long as uh, in each group there is a person that um, is well connected with the other group, so the two leaders of the two groups can. Uh, have a good relationship with each other and then they will bring together the two groups. In this case, the cluster is loose because there's no guarantee that uh, other members of the two groups are actually very close to each other. Sometimes they may be very uh, far away. Now, in this case, it's also based on individual decision, so it could be sensitive to outliers. The complete link is in um, the opposite situation where you can expect the clusters to be tight. And um, it's also based on individual decisions, so it can be sensitive to outliers. Again, to continue the analogy to uh, having a party of people, then complete link would mean when two groups uh, come together, they want to ensure that even the, uh, even the people that are unlikely to talk to each other would be comfortable uh, with talking to each other. So ensure the whole cluster to be coherent. The average link, of course, is in between and, and it's group decision. So it's uh, going to be insensitive to outliers. Now, in practice, which one is the best? Well, this will depend on the application. And sometimes you need to lose clusters and to aggressively uh, cluster objects together. Then maybe single link is good. Um, but other times you might need a uh, tight clusters Then complete link might be better. But in general, you have to empirically evaluate these methods for your application to know which one is better.
Now next, let's look at another example of a method for uh, similarity-based clustering. In this case, um, uh, which is called k-means clustering, we will represent each text object as a term vector and then uh, assume a similarity function defined on two objects. Now, we're going to start with some tentative clustering result by uh, just selecting k randomly um, selected vectors as uh, centroids of k clusters and treat them as centers as if they, they, represent, uh, they each represent a cluster. So this, is, this gives us the initial tentative clustering. And then we're going to iteratively improve it. And the process goes like this. And once we have these centroids decided, we're going to assign a vector to the cluster whose centroid that's, uh, is closest to the current vector. So basically, we're going to measure the distance between this vector and each of the centroids and see which one is closest to this one. And, and then just put uh, this, class, this object into that cluster. Now this is to have tentative assignment of objects into clusters and we're going to partition all the objects into k clusters based on our tentative clustering and centroids. And then we're going to recover, recompute the centroid based on the allocated objects in each cluster. And this is to adjust the centroid. And then we can repeat this process until the similarity based objective function uh, in this case, it's uh, within cluster sum of squares converges. And theoretically, we can show that this process actually is going to minimize the within cluster sum of squares, uh, where defined objective function, given k clusters. So it can be also shown this process will converge to a local minimum. Now, if you think about this process for a moment, it might remind you the EM algorithm for mixture model. Indeed, this algorithm is very similar to the EM algorithm for um, the mixture model for clustering. So more specifically, we also initialize these um, uh, parameters in the EM algorithm. So the random in 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 initialization uh, is similar. And then in the EM algorithm, you may recall that we're going to repeat um, E step and M step to improve our uh, primary estimation. So in this case, we're going to improve the clustering result uh, iteratively by also doing two steps. And in fact, the two steps are very similar to EM algorithm uh, in that when we allocate vector into one of the clusters based on our tentative clustering, it's very similar to inferring the distribution that has been used to generate the document in the mixture model. So it's essentially similar to E-step. Uh, so what's the difference? Well, the difference is here, we don't make a probabilistic allocation, as in the case of E-step, but rather we make a choice. We're going to make a call. You know, if this data point is closest to cluster 2, then we're going to say you are in cluster 2. So there's no choice. And we're not going to say you are 70% belonging to cluster 2. And so we're not going to have a probability, but we're going to just put one um, object into precisely one cluster. In the E step, however, we do a probabilistic allocation, so we split the counts. And we're not going to say exactly uh, which distribution has been used to, uh, to generate a, a data point. Now the next, uh, we're going to adjust the centroid, and this is very similar to M step, where we re-estimate the parameters. That's when we'll have a better uh, estimate of the parameter. So here we'll have a better clustering result by adjusting the centroid. And note that the centroid is adjusted based on the average of the vectors in the cluster. So this is also similar to the M step where we do counts, pull together counts and normalize them. Well, the difference of course is also because of the difference in the E step. And uh, we're not gonna consider probabilities when we count the points uh, in this case, for k-means, we're going to only count the objects as allocated to this cluster. And this, this is only a subset of uh, data points. But in the EM algorithm, we in principle consider all the data points uh, based on probabilistic allocations. But in, in nature, they are very similar. And that's why it's also um, maximizing a well-defined objective function. And it's guaranteed to convert, convert to a local minimum.
So to summarize our discussion of clustering methods, uh, we first discussed the model-based approaches, mainly the mixture model. And here we use an implicit similarity function uh, to define the uh, clustering bias. There's no explicitly defined similarity function. The model defines clustering bias. And the clustering structure is built into a generated model. That's why we can uh, use potentially a different model to recover different structure. Uh, complex generative models um, can be used to discover uh, complex clustering structures. We did not talk about it, before, but we can uh, easily design a generative model to generate uh, hierarchical clusters. We can also use prior to uh, further customize clustering algorithm to, for example, control uh, the topic of one cluster or multiple clusters. However, one disadvantage of this approach is that there's no easy way to directly control the similarity measure. Uh, sometimes we want to do that, but it's very hard to inject such a uh, explicit definition of similarity into such a model. We also talk about similarity-based approaches. These approaches are more flexible, directly uh, specify similarity functions. Uh, but one potential disadvantage is that uh, their object function is not always very clear. The k-means algorithm has a clearly defined object function, but it's also very similar to a model-based approach. The hierarchical clustering uh, algorithm, on the other hand, is, uh, is harder to, uh, uh, to specify the, uh, the objective function. So it's uh, not clear what exactly is being optimized. Both approaches can uh, generate the term clusters and document clusters. And term clusters can be, in general, generated by representing each term with some text content. For example, take the context of each term as a representation of each term, as we have done in paradigmatic relation learning. And then we can certainly uh, cluster terms based on actually their text representations. Of course, term clusters can be generated by using generative models as well, as we have seen. Mm -hmm.